The next presentation is by Holly Little, uh, working with Alan. Uh, she'll be speaking about the effects of commercial uh, commercial extract of a brown seaweed. You can read the name on spider on mites in tree fruit. So this is some work that uh, I did last year with, with Alan, and, and I thought you probably had just heard enough of him, so we'd mix it up and I'd come up here and, and talk to you for a little bit. A little bit of background, you know, I, I don't know that we really need to go through what mites are. We've heard a lot about them today, and, and we all understand the issues with them, as well as the issues with um, predatory insects and mites helping to control them and, and how things can get out of control with that. So I'm just going to skip over this and talk to you a little bit about seaweed, because that is what I do. Um, seaweed has been used in agricultural production for many, many years. This is not a new idea, although to some of us it seems a little bit new, a little bit quirky, a little bit like snake oil. But th these are older pictures showing um, harvest of seaweed, collection of seaweed from the beaches, um, as well as being put on, on crops. So this dates back in the Americas to Native Americans who would go out gather seaweed from the from the shoreline and put it on their crops that they were growing. So they recognized some sort of an advantage of using this seaweed mulch fertilizer on their crops. Back in the uh, early 60s, a process was developed to make, instead of shipping around raw seaweed material, to actually make an extract from the seaweed um, to, to get all the all the important compounds out of the seaweed and to be able to apply that directly to the plant either as a foliar spray or as a soil application. So things have changed over the years, but nonetheless, it's not a new idea. And in fact, there actually has been quite a lot of work done in the past looking at seaweed extracts and the impacts on mites. So this first one is one of the most current ones, 1990, taking a look at an extract of Ascophyllum nidosum, a brown seaweed, on the number of uh, spider mites in strawberries. Um, another study going back looking at, at spider mites as well, back to 1965, and taking a look at how the effects build up over time, which is quite interesting. Um, same study from 1965, taking a look at preference of mites for trees, in this case apples, that he had either been treated with seaweed or not treated with seaweed, kept as a control. And what was found was that the mites simply preferred the trees that were not treated with seaweed. So they, they not only preferred to feed off of those trees, but they also reproduced more and settled down a little bit more on, on those untreated trees. So we're seeing a lot of differences there. Um, going along with that, in, in this study, he took a look at uh, chrysanthemums and saw that there were not only fewer mites, but fewer eggs. So they're reproducing less on, on treated plants. 1969 study taking a look at red spider mites on apples. However, there's a, a study from 1967 um, taking a look at spider mites on apples from New Zealand where they did not see a difference. So there are some variability in, in the published reports looking at mites out there. Um, and we've done some internal work as well where we've seen reductions in mites. So some of that has come from simply taking a look at a trial where, where we're targeting yield and quality of, of say, apples. And the researcher I've been working with has, has gone through and said, well, gosh, I'm seeing differences in mites, too. I'm going to go out and do some of those counts. So we, we've also seen, um, we've done work on that in Apples in New York, as well as up in Nova Scotia, where we're headquartered. And we've also done some work in California taking a look at Persea mites on avocado. So we're seeing a lot of trends over time. However, there, there are still a few things that, that stand out as to not seeing differences. And as, as we know, with this type of work and, and with mites, perhaps they're not always statistically significant. Um, but one of the other things we know is that different seaweed products made from either different species or from different extract technology will result in a different seaweed product. And that might be some of these differences that we're seeing as well. So in this case, this is from a, a 2008 paper by um, Jim Craigie, who's with the National Research Council in Canada as a marine biologist. He took a look at, at seaweed extracts made from different species of seaweed and did a, a NMR analysis on them to look at all the different compounds in there. And you can see quite clearly that the different species of seaweed produce extracts with different compounds in there. And it, it logically goes, and what we've seen with further analysis is if there's different compounds in the extract, there's going to potentially be different effects on the plant. 
Okay, so in this case, what our objective was, was to determine the effect of a full season application of, of seaweed extract on um, pest and predatory mites in both apples and pears. We use Stimplex, which is a, a product of my company, Acadian Sea Plants. It is an organically registered product. However, these trials were not done in organic orchards, as, as you will see. So conducted last year, we're, we're repeating them this year at some different locations for, for some uh, follow-up work. We had two different sites, a grower location with a mixed planting of both apple and pears, and the USDA location, which was just apples. At each site, we randomly uh, subdivided it into both treated and untreated plots, of course. Um, four replicates at the grower orchard. The this plot size varied from three to 10 trees, just depending on uh, how the planting was. And at the USDA site, there were 10 tree replicates. So what we did was we followed what we would recommend for a standard seaweed extract application program throughout the whole growing season. And that starts with an application. These were all applied foliar at tight cluster, pink bud, petal fall, and then three sprays a month after that. They were applied at the label rate of three pints per acre with an air blast sprayer. Some different practices at these two different sites. Um, on the, the USDA site, the, the orchard was treated with sex pheromones but was not sprayed with other foliar pesticides during the season. However, in the grower orchard with the, with the mixed planting, there were not only sex pheromones but six pesticide sprays throughout the season. So that actually caused mite populations at the grower orchard site to increase above economic threshold. So what did we do? We collected um, samples at four different times throughout the season, 50 mature leaves from the center of each plot, counted the mites on, on the leaves. Um, if density was really high, we, we simply counted a portion of that and then recorded the number of, of mites as well as eggs and the species of those mites. So I'm going to show you some of the data. This is from um, the USDA site on the apples. What, what I've, for the sake of time, what I'm going to show you here today is simply the, um, the data where there were differences. So at both these sites, we didn't see an effect on the predatory mites, which was quite interesting because a lot of times we do see the number of predatory mites drop off, as you might expect when you have the number of, of pest mites dropping off as well. Um, so in this case, USD apple site, we had differences in the number of, of brown mites, both eggs and modals here. This green line is the control. The red line is the seaweed extract treatment on both of these graphs. You can see there, there's some pretty big differences here um, in, in the number of mites present per leaf as well as the number of eggs. So going back to that um, reproduction of the mites and less reproduction um, present. So that was brown mites on the apples at the USDA site. This is at the uh, grower orchard. This first set of graphs is taking a look at the pears, European red mite, eggs and modals, two spotted spider mite, eggs and modals here. Not as much of a difference on the European red mite in this case. Um, I, I think some of that might have been due to the confounding effects of those pesticide sprays that, that were made here. However, definitely some differences, some significance here um, at, at one point in time, but overall trends, very positive showing fewer mites as well as eggs present on the seaweed extract treated trees. Two spider, spider mites, um, probably some of the biggest differences that we had across the board, both eggs and modals here. Rather significant differences here in the number of mites present on those leaves. And this is the apple site or the grower Apple, two spotted spider mites, um, only significance here on the apple side of things. Not quite as, as clean in this case, the fewer differences early on, but overall the same trends of there being less mite numbers as well as less reproduction on the treated trees. So what, what did we learn from this? There were significant impacts of the seasonal applications of a seaweed extract program found for three different mite species that were um, pest mites on these palm fruit species in, in 2011. And this occurred both in high and low mite population orchards. So, so these trends were consistent across different practices as well as different pest populations. The mite populations in both the apples and the pears at the commercial orchard did increase to levels above economic injury thresholds. Um, and that mite outbreak, of course, like we discussed earlier, was likely related to the large number of pesticide sprays applied throughout the season. 
We found significantly lower mite populations in the Stimplex treated plots in both July and August. Later in the season, though, the mite populations, the, the pest mite populations did decrease as the predator mite populations build, built up, and that would be expected, of course. Um, what, what we're really using this as is mite su suppression is an additional benefit that a grower might see from using a seaweed extract or a Stimplex program. It's not going to be, um, it's, it's not a miticide. It's not killing mites. It's making the plants less attractive to the mites. So typically growers will use a seaweed extract to help improve plant growth, uh, establishment, help improve plant health, increase root growth, as well as help improve set and yield. So when, what we see is when a grower is using a program for those benefits, there are additional benefits that they'll see, and these are some of those additional benefits. And that's really what prompted this research in the first place, was hearing this feedback from the growers of there's fewer mites and fewer of, of those issues where they've been using a, a Stimplex program. And one, one of the things, of course, that comes to mind is, is why we're seeing this effect. One of the reasons is we know the seaweed extract helps improve the plant health. And a healthier plant is going to be less attractive to mites. There, there's, um, so, so the mites are going to feed on it less. They're going to selectively choose slightly more stressed plants over the, the healthier plants. Um, there, there's also some other ideas going around as to what might be going on from, from more of a, a molecular level, as well as, as some, some other things in, involving nutrition and things like that. But, but at this point, we, we don't have the solid answers on that. Um, we are continuing to do this work this year. We're going to continue it out all the way to harvest to take a look at yield and quality. We, we know we see the improvements in yield and quality in apples and pears. However, we're going to be combining them. So um, we should have a nice complete story when, when that work is done. Thank you for your time today.